It's 8 a.m. I took a day off work, and I'm gonna go out looking for new gear. If you're into old stuff, you find out the patterns by which people throw it away. You find out where to look for it and what search terms to use on eBay and Craigslist. In other places than here, it's probably a lot harder. If you live in Alabama, I imagine you have to spend a lot of time on eBay, going to yard sales, hoping for the best. But I live in Seattle, and Seattle is full of old tech companies and aging early adopters who are slowly but continuously getting rid of their amazing old treasures. So I go out, pretty frequently, looking for the unknown, hoping I'll stumble across an NEC PC-98 or an ancient MIDI keyboard nobody recognizes, or a complete 8086 machine for $15. And there's no reason to think I won't find them. We're here at the Dearborn Goodwill, which is the largest Goodwill in Seattle. I don't know, maybe it's the largest Goodwill. Uh, it's the anchor Goodwill for the region, and there's always interesting stuff here, although there's not always interesting, useful stuff. But we're going to scour through here because the RePC hasn't opened yet, which is the real treasure trove in this town. So let's go see if we can find anything interesting. Do you have an Intellivision, hun? Uh, I don't have that one. Wow, look at that back saw. There's always interesting recording equipment and interesting typing equipment, like steno machines and calculators, in the collectibles section at this Goodwill. But I can never get myself to fill my house up with them. They're neat, but I just don't have the space. Yep, that's a Zelda-themed flask. It's rare the collectible section has anything really worth buying, and as usual, there was nothing there I really wanted. I hung on to that Intellivision for a while, but then I remembered the Intellivision games are all terrible, so I put it back. Onward now to the warehouse, the back section, where everything fascinating lives. I wish to God I had some reason in my life to own this goddamn enormous weed lamp. And you can see here, it's a weed lamp. Check out this incredibly style and walkie-talkie. The thing looks fantastic, 80s as hell. They even had a second one. I kind of regret not buying them now. Whoa. And look at this, a beta camcorder. You don't see that very often. And this one looked fantastic. Like honestly, this must have been at the high end of the consumer range. I almost wonder if this was actually intended to be some sort of professional grade camera. The thing had everything you could want from it, but as I would find out later, no video outputs. I put it in the cart, but it was not to last. Their camera selection today is really impressive. I mean, these aren't good, but they're varied. We got yeah, another APS, a couple of ZLRs, Video 8. There's just no value in any of these old video cameras. They're just not a thing. There's nothing to do with them that's interesting. That's a really solid feeling Pentax. I don't really know Pentax, but that feels... Feels like a good camera. This is one of my favorite eras of camera, the early Nikon Coolpix Digitals. All had these rotating lens mechanisms on them. And they're uh, metal bodies. They actually have like an aluminum and magnesium chassis. They're no use nowadays. I mean, you gotta download the pictures over serial. But uh, they were very cool looking. Now this is interesting. Look at that. Oh, that's a VTR camera. Useless. Uh, you can't do anything with this unless you have the VTR that goes with it. But it does look very cool. It's very aesthetic. This is uh, sort of the baby brother of the one that I bought that was destroyed. Oh, we'll plug that in and see if it works. I was astonished by how cheap this VCR was. It has a membrane keypad. That's just disgusting. I've never seen a VCR so cheap to have a membrane keypad. I hate this VCR more than any I've ever seen. Whoa. Oh, it's an entire telephone system. Yep. We got a PBX. Here we go. Yep, those are our public lines, CO lines, 
And then you got an amp and all plug over here to plug in your, your handsets or your, your extension stations. And then I want to see something I want, so hold on to this. Well, I don't want it, so you can <laughs> ditch it. Now this is neat. This is a overhead projector, basically, except that it spits out video and it even spits out VGA. These are usually pretty low resolution, but it might be really neat for looking at books. If I can find old catalogs and stuff, this might be really handy for streaming. So I'm gonna go ahead and consider that, if it works. Now here's a rarity, a Firewire hub. Yeah, I've never seen one of these in my entire life. Firewire didn't really work that way, as I understand it. So yeah, that's someone somewhere really wants that and nobody else does. For some reason, all of a sudden, these little transistor radios started showing up in Goodwills. I'm interested in transistor radios, but not these cheesy little plastic ones. They seem to have shown up all over the place, all at once. I never saw them for years and years. And all of a sudden, every time I go to the thrift store, I seem to find one. Every time I come here, I find these audio and video devices with beautiful, beautiful interfaces. This one's an exception, though. It looks nice from afar, but up close... Ugh, these controls feel super cheap. I always review the power tools section, and this time, hey, a Campbell Hosfield air hammer. You can't argue with that for three bucks. And then there's this drill. It felt wonderful in my hand, but looking at it, it doesn't look much bigger than a regular drill. I passed on it. The sander though? Yeah, I'll check that out. Hey, look. C-clamp. Hey, look. Another C-clamp. Hey look, a sanding block. And a nice Russian man told me I could find a second hammer after I found the first hammer. Bigger. It was bigger. And it went in the cart. Then I found another C-clamp. And I found a crescent wrench. Made my crescent. And it went in the cart. There was this boom box there, and I liked the style of it, but when I got close to it, I realized it's got these ugly chrome buttons on it. And I realized the sliders are pretty unpleasant. It doesn't have wheels, it has sliders. And the audio was... ...in a clash with Israeli troops... Honestly, not very good, so I put it back. Then it was time to test the belt sander. Track it. It's all off. And let's go. Do that again. Yeah, that's good. It's loud. But the track's okay. Yeah. Uh, Thirteen dollars. I don't know. I could probably buy a brand new one for twenty. Yeah, maybe. Eh, not that. All right. What else we got here? Now this is interesting. This is fake. Uh, it says Sony. It's not a Sony. It says Sony made in Japan. This was made in Taiwan, two thousand and two. Now this this is fake. I know this is fake. Sony did not make this. Um, I don't. I don't even understand what the game is. I don't understand what this is supposed to be, especially because there is actually a tape cassette on here. But I think it's an audio player. Um, there's a there's a fake viewfinder up here, and then over here is a waste level viewfinder. And this, in all ways, this is a this is a standard terrible fake camera. It was very common from China in the 90s um, with this champagne colored paint and everything. Except normally it looks like a digital, or sorry, it looks like an SLR. So it's very unusual that they actually uh, bothered to make this look like a camcorder since there's no way it could possibly shoot video. Another interesting thing, look at the complexity of this. You see it's got that articulated dust cover there. There's no reason for that. There's no, uh, I don't know what to think of it, but it's definitely okay. garbage. I just grabbed it for a moment to see what it was about. This guy here, I just want to plug it in and see if the lights light up. So the concept with this device is that this is a camera with an LED illuminator that you put above a object that you want to show off to a class and then the camera outputs to VGA or composite video and you can put it on a projector. 
The problem is that it's very, very old, and even well into the mid-2000s, these things were using standard definition sensors and very low frame rates. They were basically very, very, very primitive digital cameras. So the companies that made them made an earnest effort, but the components they used to make their product were just not very good. So as a consequence, pretty much all of these are basically trash. But I had to give it a shot because, hey, who knows, maybe it turned out to be a lot newer than I thought it was. But it wasn't. It output 640x480 or TV resolution. It looked terrible. I put it back. Now the most interesting thing that I found when I was at the Goodwill was definitely this thing. This is a yeah, electronic typewriter coupled yeah. to a CRT monitor. Right. I had to know what this was it's about. It's a typewriter with a CRT. Exciting. I didn't end up buying this because I just don't have a place for it, but I got what footage I could from the store and I want to share it with you because it was really something special. <laughs> Would you look at that? There we go. There's a switch that puts it in word processing mode. This has a floppy drive that it's trying to write. Too. I wonder what kind of uh, processor this is. Oh, yeah, who knows? Oh, that's fair. And one other thing that's interesting is it seems to have a spell checker. Let me spell that too. Oh, spell right. Oh, yeah, there it is. So I think I hit code spell. Whoa. Thinking, and then it came up with that, and then we hit. There we go. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna spell okay. something. Spell. Thinking. Thinking. What did you miss? Second Smith. Sixth. It's still Smith. thinking. Yeah, because it's still doing comparisons. Does it get your memes on? <laughs> I don't think it's gonna get this one. No alternatives. Oh, okay. Interesting. Okay. It has a grammar checker, so. Switch your and your. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, that advanced. I think you're right. Oh! Ah. Hey, now look at that. That's cool. That actually tells you the different, yeah. different meanings. That's actually something that modern grammar check doesn't do. So wow, what a, what a remarkable piece of equipment. Try that again? Then we had to pause because hmm. Daria had a story. So one day I get hired to open a sandwich shop in Ballard. And the people that, were, that owned the place had no idea how to run a kitchen, so I was brought in to run it. And I was like, well, okay, do you have any stuff to purchase? And like, oh yeah, we got a meat slicer and everything. And I was like, great, you know. And so I'm helping them set up, get the menu all together. It's like, okay, I gotta see this meat slicer. Let's slice some meat. And they bring out one of these. Now, a professional meat slicer spins a giant 16 inch blade or so, very fast speeds. It's super sharp, it'll slice anything. This rotates at about one rotation a minute <laughs> and gets jammed if it encounters anything stronger than American cheese. <laughs> with three days to open business, I had to tell them to take back all the meat and then replace it with pre-sliced meat. That place went under in six months. So the Goodwill excursion didn't get as much in the way of electronics, namely nothing at all. This was not a good day for electronics. There were interesting things there, but there weren't things that I was interested in filling my house up with. Not for the prices they wanted anyway. If they'd wanted five bucks instead of 25 for a couple of things, I would have gone for it. So what we got instead was just all those tools, which I'll be doing restoration videos of later, I imagine. So we're heading over to RePC now, which is a place I used to work, but I never worked at this one. I worked down at the Villa one, and it was a weird place to work. We're going to the downtown one because it always has all the weird shit. Um, the Tequila one's where I go if I want like a VGA cable or something, but if I want something strange, if I want to get some weird ass floppies or a cable I can't find anywhere else or whatever, I go to the Seattle one because the Seattle one is a goddamn mess. This place 
seems to have no sense of order or structure or any sort of terms upon which they'll reject anything. They'll just stock anything at this store, it seems. So whenever you come in here, you have no idea what you're going to find. There's all sorts of weird shit up front. And there's even weirder shit in the back in the as-is section. So every time I come in here, it's an exciting trip. Of course, most of the time, I don't end up getting anything from any of those sections because the weird shit that's in here is always broken weird shit. But it's neat to look at in the store. Tape. Pretty much as soon as I got inside, I found something interesting. It was a network cable tester, which I immediately opened upside down. And then I flipped it over and took a look at it again. And it turned out to be for coax. Oh, it's a coax cable tester. That's cool. Useless. There's nothing you can cool. do with one of those. Just look at the incredible monopoly in here. We've got everything from monitors, sewing machines, UPS, VoIP telephones, there are even a couple of high-grade CRTs, like monitor-grade ones. You don't see those out in the wild very often. They must have come into them somehow. We told our friends on Twitter. They've got some 60s or 70s oscilloscopes, round screens. We've got some old modems, old mice, more VoIP phones. We got overhead projectors and LCD projectors. We got film projectors. We got slide projectors. Radios, iPod docks. I scrounged through their software thoroughly, but it turned out to be nothing other than cheap, terrible shovelware games and Microsoft suite applications, neither of which I have any interest in. There was a whole section of Macintosh software, but of course, I don't have a Mac right now, so none of it was any use. It's a shame. There's interesting stuff in there. Painter 3D. I don't want to spend $15 on this. I think they're overcharging, but at the same time, if I had a Mac, I probably would have spent the money. That thing looks terrible. Falcon 4.0? That's probably all sorts of fun. Now this is something I've never seen before. OmniWeb 5. I mean, this is the fifth major release of this, and I've never heard of it. This is apparently a custom browser. Judging from the look of it, I'm guessing it's just a Netscape recompile, but... This is from the OS 10 days, so this was post-2000. I don't know who was trying to sell a web browser for profit at that time. Netscape had already learned that lesson. I really wish this wasn't $25. I would have picked it up in a heartbeat. It's some sort of early Windows 95 reporting solution that's designed to ingest the reports from some other program's reporting system. Fascinating and awful. I walked past the NAS boxes and the hard drive bays, and I arrived at a tremendous tragedy. For the entire time that I've lived in this city, eight years, there's been a gigantic section back here for re-PCs as is, and they've gotten rid of it. This is all that remains. This used to be the equivalent of two full store aisles. Now, just a couple of paltry shelves. That eradicates most of my reason for coming here, but they still have lots of interesting stuff. Check out this Panasonic Quadraphonic Stereo Receiver. I mean, in reality, it's probably not very good, but it looks absolutely beautiful, and it's a fantastic artifact to get to look at. Check out these beta decks. I have no desire to own beta, but if I did, I'd be very pleased to find these. They look absolutely gorgeous. They're just the pinnacle of 1980s design. They also had this SVHS deck, and if I didn't already have one, I would have snapped it up in a heartbeat. So we went ahead and bailed. Our haul was this quarter-inch reel-to-reel microplayer, which has a reel in it. And we're excited to figure out what's on there. And we got some quarter-inch tape. Audio biography of radio. Jesus Christ, superstar. I'll yeah. <laughs> That's about right. It's contemporary. And video game. Video game. This is apparently an RS-232 MIDI interface. I've never seen anything like this. Um, but I'm just going to use this for the uh, DB25 shell, probably, uh, for a project I need to work on. Uh, so hopefully it's not something interesting, because then I'll have to go find another source for a DB25. Naturally, it did turn out to be something interesting. As it happens, this device here, the Kavatech MIDI tail, is the first MIDI adapter made for the PC-98, which is an interesting old NEC computer from the 80s. Popular in Japan, completely unheard of in the United States of America. Consequently, I absolutely cannot cannibalize this for the DB25 connector. It would be deeply wrong. You can't find these on eBay, and I don't know if they're on Japanese eBay. I wouldn't even know what to look for. 
For now, though, I'm trying to find somebody who will take this thing off my hands and give it a good home. But fortunately, I have enough connections on Twitter. I, I don't think that'll be difficult. I, All in all, I'd say this was a pretty good haul for today. That is to say, I got one thing, and on a lot of days, I don't get anything at all.